Hey guys, I hope your day is starting off nice. It's Dan from Pinpoint Wildlife. Today I'm going to be looking at a nature trail that's surprisingly close to my house that I never really knew about. I'm going to take a look around and see if I can find anything. Today I'm particularly going to look at uh, mushrooms and fungi and to see if I can find any and do a little education on them and uh, have a good time. So let's get into that guys. So first and foremost, what exactly is a mushroom? A mushroom or toadstool represents only one stage of a fungi life cycle. This stage is known as the fruiting stage. During this stage, the mushroom bears spores until releasing them at an appropriate size or time. These spores will eventually germinate into a network of root-like structures known as mycelium. Mycelium are often underground or hidden in a substrate of their choice. And similar to a plant, they will use these root-like structures to obtain nutrients from their substrate. And last but not least, if conditions are properly met, the mycelium will form the spore-bearing structure, commonly known as a mushroom. As you may know, mushrooms come in all different shapes and sizes. Proper mushroom identification is essential, especially when there's mushrooms that can get you really sick or send you to the hospital. This video is not a one and done guide for all mushroom foraging. Think of it more as an introductory course. Now that we have a basic understanding of mycology, we should be ready to go out and find some mushrooms ourselves. During the time of this recording, it is May, and depending on when you're looking for mushroom, what season, you may come across different types of mushrooms. Now, I did have two initial goals going into this trip. I wanted to take a bunch of cool pictures, for one. And then for two, I wanted to come across a morel mushroom. These mushrooms are one of the most sought after in the spring season. This forest is like bedded with these these low-lying plants that have these like purple flowers and I think it looks pretty cool. So I'm going to take a few photos and videos of this. Okay, I just want to make it clear. It is not easy to maneuver through this forest. It is super dense, at least in some areas. <laughs> And it is filled with poison ivy, which is not good for me. I'm very allergic to poison ivy. Yikes. Alright guys, so I have a common species of shelving mushroom right here behind me. And we're going to take a look at it, see what they're all about. It didn't take long to find our first mushroom of the trip. This shelving or bracket mushroom is known as Cereoporus squamosus, also known as dried saddle. This species, like many others, has gone through a few scientific name changes. First described scientifically by British botanist William Hudson in 1778, he named it Boletus squamosus. Then a widely known Elias Magnus Fries. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Elias Magnus Fries. <laughs> anyway, he named the mushroom Polyporus squamosus, and finally it was changed in 1986 by a French mycologist, Lucien Collet. Lucien Collet. In other words, the mushroom went through three scientific name changes, with the most recent, Cereoporus, being the most taxonomically accurate. Despite this, many individuals still refer to the mushroom as polyporus squamosus. Oddly enough, these fungi are able to reside on trees that are both living and dead and decaying, so they can be either parasitic or sapotrophic. These mushrooms can be found on ash, beech, horse chestnut, Persian walnut, lime, maple, and some others, but is most notably associated with dead elm trees, which is why many morel mushroom foragers tend to run into them so basically these are like the consolation prize or like a participation award for hunting down the morels. 
They're also edible, but they're not quite as delicious in comparison to the morel mushroom. Alright guys, so I have another type of shelving mushroom right over here behind me. Let's take a look at this one and see what makes it different from the other shelving mushroom. Now take a look at the top of this bracket mushroom. It is relatively similar in appearance to the dried saddle. Let's pretend you can't tell the difference. What distinguishable features could you compare? Well, you could point out the obvious color and size differences of the top side here, but what else could you compare? When looking underneath the mushroom cap, you might notice some more differences. This mushroom here has what mycologists would call teeth or spines in comparison to the dried saddle, which has more of a pore-like appearance. So finding out if a mushroom has pores, gills, or teeth can be a helpful species identifier. With a bit of research, we can deduce that we're looking at a fungus scientifically named Urpex lactus, and its common name is the milk white toothed polypore. This also happens to be another fungus that feeds on rotting wood, but can occasionally be parasitic on living trees. This mushroom is not an edible species, nonetheless a very cool mushroom to find on our trip. Alright guys, so I just found the morel mushroom, the species of mushroom that I've been looking for this whole trip. And unfortunately, it is a tad bit small, maybe like that big. Uh, too small to um, harvest, but nonetheless, it is a good find because it means there's mushrooms in this forest. The name morel is a common name that can refer to any mushroom in the Morcella genus. This morel here is a yellow morel, arguably the most sought after species of mushroom you could come across anywhere in the US. And its scientific name, Morcella escolenta. The Marcella genus contains around 70 species of fungi, many of which are edible and popular to forage. They also seem to be very difficult to cultivate in large quantities, further adding to their already high demand. It's been observed that forests that have recently been burned down produce more morels the following spring. This is because soil becomes more alkaline as a result of wood ash and water mixing into the soil. In other words, these morels love to fruit in these alkaline soil conditions. Now there's a lot more to talk about when it comes to morel mushrooms. So if this video does really well, I might just make another video completely dedicated to morel mushrooms next spring. I know that's a long ways away, but I think it'd be worth the wait. Alright guys, I think I'm just about ready to wrap this video up. So we weren't super successful when it came to finding the morels, but we found one, so that counts for something. And um, it was fun making the video, so if you guys learned anything about mushrooms or enjoyed the video, make sure to give it the respective rating and um, subscribe if you want to. See you in the next one. Hopefully, I can stay in these weekly schedules and, um, you know, get outside more and do this. So thanks for watching. Have a good one.